new year, new resolutions. And if one of those resolutions is to learn Blender, you found the right video. In this video, I'll go over a three-step method to learn Blender or basically any skill you want, including some of my favorite Blender creators who taught me almost everything I know, how to use all that free knowledge out there, and how you can speed up your learning process. Step one, consume. So before actually investing in learning, start consuming Blender content. Okay, so hear me out. You know that feeling whenever you start developing an interest for something where consuming almost everything you can find about that topic becomes somewhat compulsive. Well, Maybe that's just me, but whenever I start learning something new or am invested in a topic, I consume basically everything I can find on that subject. As an example, not so long ago, I wanted to upgrade my PC and I spent countless hours reading on which parts to get, compatibility, CPU and GPU bottlenecks and so on. I dove really deep into this thing to get the most complete picture of it and make sure I got the right parts that worked for my goals. Anyways, we're not talking PC parts now, we're talking learning Blender. And you can do a lot in Blender, like modeling products, characters, animation, Texture, rigging, portraits, shading, portraits, environments, portraits, movies, portraits, 2D art, portraits, motion portraits, graphics, and so many more. And although they're all equally cool, the chances of you learning and being good at all of them will be slim. Plus, by dividing your attention, you'll learn slower, run into more hurdles, and feel less accomplished because of that. So before starting strong and running into a wall, make sure to do this first. Watch time-lapse videos of amazing projects being made, watch tutorials in a broad range of topics, watch new feature releases in new Blender updates, and check out amazing artworks across the internet. I personally like to create a folder in Chrome where I bookmark anything I found interesting to get back to it at a later stage. You do this not only to find something that you think is fun to do, but also to make sure you actually want to learn Blender before putting in a real effort that is. And at the same time, you'll already learn a few things here and there and get a feel for how other people use the software. Again, Blender can do practically anything, but you either can't or don't want to. Maybe you're a big fan of abstract motion graphics, or you love sci-fi space stuff. Maybe you want to recreate a beautiful landscape you once saw on a holiday, or maybe you love your pet so much you want to make a 3D recreation of them. The possibilities are literally endless. And there's a lot of content out there, readily available for free and sometimes paid, that will help you make a choice in what you enjoy. I believe that if you're truly excited about a topic in 3D, you can learn it, no matter how difficult it is. And to help with that, there's no better time than today because we're blessed with an insane amount of free learning content on YouTube. So here's my top picks for learning certain things in Blender. Ducky 3D an endless library of motion graphics, animation, and lighting tutorials that are also great for learning a lot of the basics of Blender. Derek Elliott, the best product animation, rendering, and presentation tutorials out there. Not only does he cover everything you need for professional results, but he also has a wide range of variety in his videos. Arendelle, extremely in-depth tutorials on shading and geometry notes that will often blow your mind, but they'll teach you everything you need to know to become a professional node user in Blender. Stash, realism, cinematography, and loads of tips and tricks with a large amount of humor in them too. Or the uncles and aunts and pet dogs and pet cats. I think they're great easygoing videos for a beginner audience. Max Hay, a wizard when it comes to epic looking concept style renders that have been taking the internet by storm for years now. Very creative and full of tips for optimal results with minimal effort. Tiny Noki, the best looking stylized cute Pixar Disney looking art tutorials and time lapses. Oh, and as a bonus, they also share some cool free Blender files and assets. Shokofer, amazing architectural visualization, or Archfis for short, tips and tricks with full free courses on interior renders available as well. Now I think learning is fun. It's something we do from the day we're born till the day we die. But if you struggle to learn something, it can become frustrating and even make you hate it. So by taking the time to learn what you truly enjoy in Blender, learning becomes effortlessly. Who knows, you might even start loving it. And while we're on the subject of learning and consuming new things, Skillshare, the sponsor of this video, is the perfect way to invest in yourself and your goals. They have the largest online learning community for creatives with thousands of classes led by industry pros across a wide variety of topics, including Blender. 
And because Skillshare realizes this huge library of content can be daunting, they've just released Learning Paths, which are hand-picked classes meant to be taken in order, so you don't have to look for the perfect classes to learn a certain topic. For example, this brand new Learning Path by my buddy and famous product animator Derek Elliott, where you'll learn everything you need to know to create stunning 3D renders and animations. It's completely aimed at beginners, but still taught me some great animation tips, like using simulation and shape keys for amazing looking curtain and animations to liven up my project. But there's also learning paths for building and launching your creative business, brand promotion, and learning how to price and negotiate yourself as a freelancer. Honestly, I wish I knew about Skillshare when I first started out, because it would have made my own learning experience so much easier. And that's why I'm excited to share that Skillshare has allowed me to give the first 500 people who use the link in my description down below a one month free trial of Skillshare. So make sure to sign up now and start working on your New Year's resolution. The goal for step one is that you have an idea of your passions and don't spend time and energy needlessly on things you don't like doing anyways. My recommendation is you spend at least a couple of hours at this step, leave it be for a bit and get back to it maybe a few days later and see if you still feel the same. If you do, you're on the right track and this next step will ensure you'll actually get the skills to create what you want. Step two apply. So now it's time for the real fun. And at this point in the process, you should have a decent idea of what things you'd enjoy to do in Blender. You've also built up a small library of nodes and bookmarks, if you did as I said, with useful and interesting content around these topics. Now maybe you think I'd say, now go find some tutorials, like my own, that fit your chosen subject and go do them. And you're partially correct. However, we're going to do things a little differently. Instead of just doing tutorials, I'd like you to come up with a small project that fits your topic of interest. Some of my own interests are sci-fi, environments, and motion graphics. So I'm going to start with a seamlessly looping animation of a sci-fi donut. Now I know what I want to make, I can go look for tutorials that might help with achieving this. Since I want to do looping sci-fi stuff, I can watch some specific Ducky 3D tutorials, like this one and this one. And since I wanted to contain a donut as well, I'll also check out Blender Guru's new 4.0 donut series. While watching these tutorials, I immediately try to apply what is being taught to my own little project. If I feel uncomfortable and not skilled enough, I can first do exactly as the tutorial says and just recreate the result from the video. And after that, try to apply that knowledge to my own project. Learning, in my own experience and from what I've seen from people I've taught, is mostly a back and forth between the information you're trying to absorb and the application of this information. Repetition is key here and going back and forth between useful tutorials and your own project can help cement the knowledge inside your head. If done correctly and with enough effort and time, you'll get what you set out to do which in my case was to create a looping animation of a sci-fi donut. It might not be perfect, it might not look exactly the way you had it in mind, or it might not have gotten done as fast as you expected. But at least you've completed a project and if done correctly, you learned a lot along the way. So that's one way of doing things. Another great way to force yourself to come up with a unique project and stick to a schedule is to join in on community challenges. Obviously there's famous ones like the Punisher challenge, but those are usually filled with pro artists and they might feel a little bit daunting when you're first starting out. So instead I recommend checking out some Discord servers that host regular community challenges like my own. They're, they're pretty low stakes. They usually don't last very long, so it won't become too big of a project and you'll get feedback back from your peers and grow along the way. And you get to learn from others. There's a lot of pluses. The goal for step two is to take what you've consumed in step one and apply it to something of your own. You compare this with following along with tutorials to learn the basics, but remember you don't need to become a pro overnight. Instead, try to look at this from the Kaizen method, which is an actual business philosophy. Improving a little bit every time you work on it is key. And with that, you know the two basic steps to take for growing and learning basically any skill. And if you keep at it, you'll become a pro at this skill eventually. But this process can take a long time and if you want to make it go faster, step 3 will help. Step 3. Invest. If you've done step 1 and 2 correctly, you should be seeing improvement every time you work in Blender. However, you've also probably come to the realization that getting good enough to get a job, for example, is going to be a long road. From what I've seen and heard from other professionals in the industry, there's only one real way to speed up this process, investing in your desired skill. And there's two things everyone in the world can potentially invest into a skill, time and money. 
I truly believe this can make the difference between years of practice and months potentially. The first way to invest time comes down to how much time you can free up to put into step one and two for learning Blender. There aren't really shortcuts into learning a skill as far as I know, besides maybe having a talent or something. So getting good requires time and the more time you can invest in a short time frame, the quicker you'll get to your desired level of skill. What I like about this is that paired with the fact that Blender is completely free, time is something everyone in this world has and it allows you to level the playing field compared to people who are, for example, in way wealthier countries. The second way to invest is a bit less fair, as it requires you to have the means to do so. By using money to gain access to things like courses, online learning communities, schools, or even personal tutoring, you can get a more hands-on approach to learning Blender. Each of these comes with its own price tag though, with courses obviously being the cheapest and personal tutoring probably being the most expensive but that basically comes down to what you're willing to invest. However, if you are willing to make a smaller investment, I personally recommend getting a Blender course. I'm a big fan of the CG Boost ones since they also give access to a learning community where you get feedback from your peers and professional community managers. Some of their courses that I would recommend are Master 3D Environments, Robotic Planet, Blender Launchpad. Likewise, CG Cookie has a great variety of courses as well. It can help you learn faster and they also have a large community where you can ask questions. I'd recommend you to try and look at these two investment methods as a sort of balancing act. The more time you can spend, the less money you need and the more money you can invest, the less time you need to learn Blender. Obviously, if this is all a hobby to you, this doesn't really apply. But if you're willing to take this to a professional level, investing money and time, preferably both, but you know, <laughs> the more you can put into it, the more you'll get out of it. But even assuming you can invest all the time and money in the world, a lot of beginners get stuck on learning Blender because they make one major mistake. So. Why don't you check out this video next to learn how to overcome it and learn Blender in the fastest way possible.